Hi, and welcome back to the Why oh Myo podcast. This is Janine Steen, your host, hoping to answer your questions about the who, what, where, when, why, and how when it comes to myofunctional therapy. So if a patient is identified with a tongue thrust, many people question or many people don't understand what it means if a myofunctional therapy program is recommended. Myofunctional therapy is designed to retrain and reestablish not only the proper function of your swallow, but also to support the development and correction of proper lingual posture, labial posture, chewing, swallowing, articulation, jaw stability, range of motion, dissociation, as well as any articulation or feeding needs. A myofunctional therapy program is only as successful as the time you put into the therapy, but even more so is successful based on the time that you put in outside of the therapy room. Myofunctional therapy is recommended a minimum of two times per week with a trained myofunctional therapist, as well as at least practicing three times per day at home. Now, when you hear that, it definitely seems like a ton of work, and I'm not going to say it's not, but I will also say that a job of a myofunctional therapist is to reestablish a pattern or a motor plan that occurs every one to two minutes. So if you swallow every one to two minutes, not including eating and on top of that in between those swallows we must reform or change the lingual resting posture the labial resting posture the ability to dissociate your tongue and your jaw work on chewing swallowing expanding the dietary repertoire as well as improving the motor plan associated with this new swallow and the um, articulation remediation or the motor plan of the articulation remediation. When we spend two times per week with a patient, that's nothing in comparison to what we have to change and what our focus and our goals are. So, Just like any other motor plan, I tend to always use the example of um, when you go to a gym and you are working towards better health and perhaps weight loss. If you go to the gym one time per month versus five times per week, you are going to see the benefits definitely a lot quicker than if you go five times per week versus once a month. The same thing holds true for an individual that perhaps plays a sport. Um, I'll use the example of baseball. And when a person is learning to hit, the motor plan is based on your brain telling your hands to hold the bat a certain way and swing when you see that pitch that motor plan will change for each pitch each pitcher each time you're up at bat but the only way you improve that motor plan is by doing it over and over again another example that i just recently used was with my own daughter Um, she tore her acl and had surgery and she had a lot of difficulty and didn't understand why she could not move and mobilize and um, bend her leg the way she could pre-surgery. And the reason is because she needed to reestablish that motor plan. 
her brain needed to start communicating again now that um, the ACL was uh, repaired. Now her brain had to learn to um, rewire or recreate that motor plan now that the um, tear had been corrected or um, fixed. Um, so it's not something that it's drill, um, it's not a magic pill, you can't come in and, and come in once in a while and hope for a change. And oftentimes this is where we see the difference between individuals that have tongue thrusts that affect their speech and perhaps have a lisp and they go to speech therapy um, and receive just articulation therapy versus those that receive myofunctional therapy because when we're working on just the articulation when you have a tongue thrust, that's really the symptom not the cause. So for those patients, we often find that um, they do amazing and they may do, they may find remediation within the four walls of a therapy room, even when um, in very conscious or structured settings. However, step out of that therapy room, um, do it when you're tired, do it when you're fatigued, and you'll find that that lisp or that articulation disorder comes is prominent again because we didn't function or we didn't address the cause of the problem and the cause of the problem is actually that thrust so if we were to do a myofunctional therapy program and the patient was practicing the way they needed to um, and they're following all of the rules and guidelines that we outline for them, oftentimes we don't have to touch the articulation because it will remediate on its own as we address and correct the tongue thrust. So instead of having to do a myofunctional therapy program as well as an articulation program the only thing we're doing is a myofunctional therapy program that in the end will remediate both this is often where parents and children become frustrated because they've been in therapy for a really long time and they just never seem to progress to that subconscious naturalistic setting or that naturalistic conversation. Um, so no matter how long they've been in therapy and how well they do on every articulation assessment, it's not a true reflection of what happens in their conversation or in more of an informal setting. So once you begin myofunctional therapy not only is um, it important to be seen at least twice a week um, but it's also important to practice at least three times a day so when i say three times a day a total uh, it should take you probably a total of 15 minutes to practice all three times i always suggest to utilize the downtime or that natural downtime in your child's life to practice because if you or in your life to practice because if you add it as one more thing for them to do aside from homework and baseball and dance and gymnastics and eating dinner and taking a shower and reading um, the day just gets longer and longer and their task list gets longer and longer and then they just or you just become more adverse to doing the therapy or even for the success so my first suggestion always is to incorporate it um, keep a mirror in your car keep a list of the exercises in the car as we all spend so much time in the car to and from activities but that can be two of your times practicing we practice on the way to baseball and we practice on the way home from baseball so now we've practiced twice um, and then if we want to add one more time I traditionally recommend doing it in the morning when they're brushing their teeth um, which is often difficult especially on a school day or then at night when they're brushing their teeth if that is more difficult, 
then I'll write the recommendation for, um, I'll say if the child is allowed 20 minutes of TV time every night or a half hour of TV time, every time there's a commercial, then they must do an exercise. So now it's incorporated into something that is rewarding or as a parent you can say, I will give you the ability to watch one TV show at night, but every time there's a commercial, we're gonna practice. Um, if you're cooking dinner, um, let the child or the be sitting next to you um, and so that they can, you can supervise them doing um, the exercises and practicing. Now, as a child, um, it is not enough to say, I told them to do their exercises, they know what they need to do, um, and I think they're doing it, or they are doing it, um, because if it is really important, especially for the parent or a caregiver to be with the child, um, especially at the beginning, and especially for some of the exercises, because if the child is doing it incorrectly, or they're rushing it, or if they perhaps are not really doing it, or minimizing the number of repetitions, or not completing everything um, in its fullest, then they're not getting the full benefit of the therapy. And yes, I know we are all torn in a million different ways in a million different directions every day, but if we need to support our child when they're doing their homework or studying for a test especially, then this th that child or this child will definitely require um, some sort of supervision or support, at least at the beginning of therapy, um, when myo is, myofunctional therapy is just starting, and definitely for certain exercises. With that being said, um, we always welcome the parents and the families to come into the therapy room, to watch what we're doing, um, to supervise the way we troubleshoot, to look for some of the areas or the errors that could be um, taking place, um, and how to rectify those problems with your child at home. Because if they are making those same mistakes while they're practicing, then again, they're not getting the full benefit of the practice that they are doing. If you are an adult and or self-sufficient and don't require um, or don't have someone to supervise you, um, I, the best time also I usually say is again in the car um, to and from work, to and from school, um, when you're watching TV, you're cooking dinner, um, take advantage of that time. Again, otherwise it becomes insanely overwhelming to be doing therapy twice a week and to um, practice three times per day. Now, if you practice less per day or more per day, will there be a difference? 100%. If we're trying to change a motor plan, then the more you do it, and the more you do it correctly, the quicker the brain will learn this new function, which will then support everything else, the form of and shape of your mouth, your, the form and shape of your bite, the form and shape of your palate, and of course, the um, overall clarity and improvement in articulation and intelligibility. If you practice more than three times a day, will that help? Of course, the more you do it, the faster it will help. So if you practice five times a day, will it make a difference? Absolutely, it will definitely make a difference. Um, I would definitely say that the more you do it, but is definitely going to make a difference, but only if each time you practice and with each trial, um, you're making sure and you are doing it correctly. If you're doing it five times a day and you're rushing it or uh, modifying the exercises or how you're doing it, then no, you're not going to get the full benefit and no, um, it will not expedite your um, completion of the program and expedite the remediation of your thrust. But if you are doing it correctly and practicing and attending therapy regularly, then by all means, yes, um, you will see those long-term progress, 
um, and everything that we are targeting will now become subconscious and sub become more of your subconscious more quickly. I hope I was able to give you some insight and answer some of your questions regarding myofunctional therapy. Please stay tuned and listen to our Myo Minute and tune in to our Talk the Talk interviews with the many different medical, dental, and rehab professionals as they elaborate or answer your questions and address your concerns directly, especially when it's related to speech language pathology and myofunctional therapy.